munchkins and viewers like it's me munchie and today is a very special introduction because we got three different rescues all within this video so this is kind of a vlog style video where one of my transporters who was going across to Idaho asked me if there was any animal she can help along the way. And while we have been very slow with adoptions, we did have room to take in a few in need of animals and all of them needed help. I believe everything's from Eastern Washington because we did try to find some in Idaho and unfortunately when we inquired for some Idaho hamsters, they responded but then never responded back. So we saved who we could save and today let me just go over with you what you see before you because I want to get them in their setups which I planned ahead and I want you guys to be understanding that this is their transport carrier. If they've been in this type of environment prior to me rescuing them, being in it for a little bit longer will not stress out the animal. It's just unfortunate the animal was housed in something like this for a long time. But today we only have one animal that was in that setup and we actually took him out prior because it smelled, it was disgusting and we needed him transported a different way. So let me show you what I have and then we'll go over ads later. So we picked up some brother gerbils that no longer were being cared for, but they're very young from looking at them here. We had a lot of different ads that we contacted. So I would have to pull up the ads on my phone and I'll do that at the end, like I said. But these guys came in this, however, their ad was a tank. So this is possibly what they came in prior to switching them to a tank. And then the person saying, nah, we're not doing that anymore. More. And look at this guys, it's broken. And this is more than likely broken because this is where the water bottle went. I reviewed this cage. This is the Petco exclusive only Critter Trail starter cage. This is now decked out to be a transport carrier because this wasn't what they were kept in and it doesn't have that much damage besides the two up top here that could have been plugged up with stoppers, but they probably didn't know or understand stoppers. So this can probably still function as a travel carrier and they are brothers. I gave a look-see to make sure that they do have balls dragging and they both do. So they are brother gerbils and they're going in a 40 gallon breeder tank with a lot of bedding. Next one is the worst one of them all. And this feller is huge huge and smells. His environment was filthy and disgusting. So if you pass off an animal and they're in so much filth that it stinks up your car, that is not acceptable. That is downright neglectful if you are passing off an animal and they're in piss poor condition. And I will be picking him up because we did do a quick look-see to make sure that he was a male and he is. There he is, he's a winter white and I believe he is from Petco. And the reason I say that is because of the items that were purchased uh, alongside him that we have, but this is him and he's actually quite big. So winter whites, they are hybrids and unfortunately they have one of the worst genetics. I've had the worst luck when it comes to taking care of winter whites and he is actually very big. He's a big boy. So let me just take him out. I will be scruffing him. Just letting you guys know, scruffing is essential here at the rescue and should be essential in your hamster keeping life. The reason for that is because you need to do body checks regularly to make sure that they don't have any abnormal looking parts to them. Because you could find out that maybe your hamster has cancer. Maybe there was a scratch that got infected. Maybe they had bumblefoot. So he's not used to people scruffing him. When you see me doing it, it's not that I'm putting the animal in danger. They can actually be scruffed. But unfortunately at the camera angle of which I'm coming at, I'm going to try my best to present him to you guys so you can take a look-see, but just be aware you must flip them on their back only for a brief moment and then put them back down. So while it may look like a struggle for some hamsters, it's not a struggle for them all. This guy is massive. He's as big as my hand. That is insane. So here we go, scruff him right in the back, flip him over, and that's how you could tell he's a male. Oh, I know, I know. That was blurry there. I might have a good picture later on, but as you can tell, he's pretty flat like a pancake. Um, and it looks like, let's see, your back leg is not functioning right. Uh-oh. Why is your back leg pushed out to the side like that? Oh no. This guy's got a broken leg. Hold on. Fuck. Oh no. Oh no. Do you see that? That, he broke his leg, I know, I know, hold on. As you can see here, he's putting it out to the side, but when you just saw that, yeah, he, he broke his leg. Oh my God. This might be an old wound, 
so it might not have healed correctly. So we actually had to amputate one other hamster's leg because it was broken like that. But oh my gosh, there's a scab. Oh my, oh, this poor dude. Oh my gosh, okay, hold on. There's a scab and I'm just feeling him now. And this is important, right behind his ear, right here. I'm touching him right there. I'm gonna have to tell my transporter because she did not see that when putting him in. But this is why we do body checks, guys. This poor hamster has been neglected. This, ah. Oh, this poor hamster. I'm so sorry, dear. Also, it's a good indication to make sure that they don't have any fleas or mites on them by giving them a quick look-see over their skin. If you see any patches that aren't, you know, their scent glands, dwarfs, they should be on the chest. I am seeing no indication that there's red skin, that he is itching. He's actually just trying his best to function. And, oh, Mm, this makes me so mad. I'm gonna be making an appointment tomorrow. Well, at least calling and trying to schedule an appointment. And he's so sweet. Hello. You deserve so much better. If you ever have an animal that has any sort of um, disability when it comes to walking, definitely don't get them a wire enclosure because that can encourage them to climb. And dwarf hamsters, I don't recommend putting in preview 528 enclosures either. This is what he came in. And the reason why his wheel is disassembled is because it stinks. It smells the worst. This poor hamster, oh. Did it come off? Oh, it did. There's a possibility with this style of wheel that he might have... Oh. <coughs> no wonder she says it smells. Oh, he's been sitting in this for a while. Dwarf hamsters don't usually stink this bad. You can smell this with Syrian hamsters, but oh my God. Oh, that's gnarly. Okay, put, put, put you back in the bag. It has slits, so when they run, if they get their fingernails caught within the wheel, they could break it. So seeing this style enclosure, seeing the height of it, there's no way, in my mind, he would have got his foot trapped in the wire. But I will look right now to make sure that the wire isn't bent. And the only part that I can see that's bent would be where the water bottle is. But I don't know if he climbed and got stuck right here. But look at how that bends right there. It's a possibility, but I have a feeling he got caught in the slit. Now this lookout has a ton of just regular seed in here. It looks like there's no sunflower seeds, but I know this seed mix. This is the cheapest option seed mix you can get because it's Mana Pro Hamster and Gerbil, which I have yet to review, but it's on my review list. This stuff has all these inside of it. So wait a minute, this is not the same feed. Okay, there's two different feeds I got apparently because this is definitely not it. This looks more like the PetSmart Great Choices feed or one of the Fortified Diets from Wild Harvest, but this is very low quality in here, but this is completely different from what I'm seeing in here. You'll see this later, but there is another wheel, a 6.5 inch wheel, which is not appropriate for a winter white because they're so massive now and they are kind of genetically bred that way in America and it's sad. His setup right now reeks, but I want to move on. That's what he came with. He also came with bedding, which we will put away. I'll make sure to freeze it since it's small and opened. Otherwise, don't trust open bedding. Could be contaminated. And the tiniest tiny tails balls. I'm seeing tiny tail balls pop up everywhere. This is bad. Don't use exercise balls. Use a playpen much easier. And guinea pig yogi drops. No, 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 no. Too much sugar, which is very bad for winter white. They are very prone to diabetes. Oh my gosh. No. Oh. oh, this whole thing is horrible. This poor hamster. Leave your comments down below on what I should name him. He needs a name. He needs a very fitting name for him. I won't name him until you guys suggest some names and we'll pick them out in the comments. And lastly, you would not believe what we found. We found a Robo Roski with a Russian dwarf hamster. So I have not seen the dwarf hamster, but I have seen the Robo Roski pop out. Let me see if I can find them. I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to dwarf hamsters because I'm afraid that they're gonna be nippy. It's just now instinctual, you know? But hi, fella, are you gonna be nippy? Are you gonna be? It'd be good. Hi there. Just don't nip me, okay? Hi, bud. Okay, so he's friendly, at least for right now. Is it okay if I can scruff you? Yeah, very, very easy. Wow, this has been a while since I've had a Russian dwarf that's not gonna eat my fingers off. I know. Oh, oh, it's okay. Oh, you didn't like that? You see that response, that squeaking? That's because this hamster's never been scruffed before, but we need to scruff you. I'm scruffing gently flipping you over and it looks like he is a male. So he has a bite wound to his face right there, you can see, but you can see his scent gland here 
and his little weeby down there. He got nervous, but then he was fine when I was checking him out, so that's good. The Roboroski, this seems to be very friendly. Let's see if I can actually grab him real quickly. Hi, oh, I know. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, you're so fast, but you're so pretty and very young too. Oh, look at you. Yep, this looks like a boy. So this right here is a boy. You can see scent gland and his wee wee's up here and his little things down here, but I'm not seeing actually. Hold on. So I'll make sure that there's no nipples being covered by fur. No, it's not. I'm just not seeing any balls on him, but he does have some very long fingernails. And when I go to touch him, I just want to make sure he doesn't have any scabs. He was housed with a Russian dwarf hamster. So I just want to make sure that he's not injured, which I thought that was an injury, but he just has really long claws, which you might not be seeing right now. So I do apologize, but this is how we want to make sure that when we intake, we know exactly what's going on with them. That's what he looks like. Hi, bud. Yeah. Wink at the camera. He's a pretty good size. Let me just try to hold him this way. You guys can see that right there as I hold him like this. Not squishing him. He's just kind of popping out right there. Good fella. Let's put them in their new enclosures. Well, temporary new enclosures. But first, before I forget, these guys actually did come with another tiny tails ball, but it's much bigger. It looks like bedding that was almost completely used. Oh no. And they came with oxbow. Ugh. This is so screaming pet smart. Ugh. All right, let's go put them away together. All right, guys, so the first one's going in here. So Russian Dwarf is going in this one. Hopefully you can kind of see the setup here. Got a nine inch wheel. I got a little bit of sand uh, just because we've been uh, so low on sand, but at least they have sand. This will be changed out regularly. That way they have fresh sand. Otherwise they tend to eat their food in the sand, which is not the greatest. We got some tunnels here. We got at least, let's see, this looks like a good four to five inches of bedding here. You can't really tell in the camera. Um, same with this one too. It's gonna be at least four to five inches right here. And this is a paper bedding. Some of them is mixed with Aspen, um, which I believe is the top one up there. But this has hides and natural looking setup. I like to go with the natural, but there is some instances where I do ceramic and plastic. I like ceramic, so ceramic's completely fine. Plastic, not so much. I don't really like using it all the time. There you go. There he is, right there. I'm just gonna scatter this. Because this was only a temporary travel, so he hasn't been on the road for that long. Put some behind the wheel, because for whatever reason, they love to be right behind the wheel. And there we go. First setup done for our Russian dwarf hamster. Bye, bud. All right, moving on to the next one, which the next one will be the winter white. All right, so this one is pretty much the same, although they have a much bigger dish. So right now, some of our dishes are being used for the other hamsters. The rescue is plum full again. So we are kind of making what we can. This is just a baking glass dish. So this is still deep enough. However, with dwarf hamsters, they like to roll around on the surface. I don't really see them digging too much. That's more of Syrians, but let's put our winter wipes in here. And when I said I believe the winter white's from Petco, usually the Sunfire coloration, which is what Petco calls it, is usually found only at Petco. So come here, my bud. I'm so sorry. Lifting you up gently and placing you in. There we go. But we do have some plastic in here, but it's not too bad. And then we're just gonna scatter this around. And the reason why I have bowls instead of scatter feeding is so that I can keep track of how much they eat and what they're taking out specifically. So there he goes. And remember guys, I'm looking for names, so leave them in the comments. And last but not least, we got the Roboroski set up here. This one has an eight inch wheel because he's on the smaller side and our Roboroski minimums are 6.5 inches. However, some can get pretty big. This guy is actually very small, so the eight inch wheel is completely fine. Eight inch wheel right here is actually the minimum for winter white. So nine inch wheels, I really love, so that's why I'm sticking to the silent runners. But these are wheels that we have too, that we will use. Let me see if I can pick you up one more time, bud. And there you go. All right, he's in and he's on his wheel. <laughs> and he's running. Oh, he's so fast. I wish you guys could see, I'm so sorry. I put the wheel on the opposite side of the camera. Oh no, oh no, this was not planned. I'm so sorry. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. See how speedy he is. Roboroski hamsters are very difficult to tame. So I would highly not encourage them for new time hamster owners. And this is a different style enclosure where I actually have the mesh on the sides here. I don't really like this one because it can really overflow when it comes to bedding. However, it can be nice because if I put this on top, 
if I ever needed to stack them, it is possible to just stack another one on top of this one without complications of not being able to breathe due to ventilation issues. So that's why it's on the side. All right, last but not least, these guys, they are getting this beautiful enclosure, which you can't see because it's top down, but it has at least six inches of bedding. Just because we do go through a lot of bedding at the rescue, we can't be like hobbyists where we can fill it up to like eight to 10 inches, but that's highly what we recommend for gerbils. So we got the Unite Angel wheel. These are great for gerbils because guess what guys? It's very hard plastic. They cannot chew it up. So highly recommend. We got the large living world glass water bottle, lots of bedding and lots of places for them to make their burrows. So let's take them out. I don't know how handleable they are, but I'm going to hopefully put them in each at a time. These are the only ones I haven't actually held yet. So here we go. Let's see if I can even open the thing because it's proving to be absolutely difficult. There we go. Come here. All right, I got the first one guys. Second one's trying to come out, but there we go. There you go. Don't freak out. Give him a one, two, look-see. Oh, yeah, I know. Whoa, you're a little speedy. This guy is very freaked out, I understand. Give me a quick sec. Yep, that's a male. All right, just to gently look over. Yep, that is a male. So we make sure to check genders because if we receive any that are opposite genders, immediately separate. Hello guys, it's me later in the evening, but this is the moment you guys have been waiting for. Their ads, how we were able to find them, what was discussed with my transporter that volunteers at the rescue. So let's talk about the winter white, which you guys are going to be naming. This is what my transporter told me. Uh, he's super friendly, very fat, which we did see. His cage is breaking and it reeks. The whole car stinks now. So that was what we got. So whenever we get a very stinky enclosure, that means they didn't clean it out. God knows how long it's been since the actual enclosure has been clean. And now we have come to find out that he does have a broken leg that is what looks like an old wound and may need to be amputated. So let's discuss with what his ad actually said. And this ad was listed on Facebook market. And on Facebook market, you are not supposed to be selling animals, but this person did so very sneaky like, which I, I like, I'm already not happy with this person because they were neglectful. And I just, mm -mm, no, no, no. Don't like this person. And <laughs> oh, the animal has a past injury that obviously was caused in their care. It said hamster cage comes with wheel, hut, and water bottle, and captain stays with his ship. That right there was like, okay, yeah, there's a hamster in here, right? And lo and behold, you can kind of see the hamster in the photos, but not really. Like you can see that he's up there. But when we actually inquired, we got these two screenshots of him looking out from his hide and enclosure. And he just looks sad miserable. So we're like, yeah, we'll get him. And even though in those photos, we couldn't see the rest of his body, we knew just from the enclosure and how many of these enclosures I've had of this particular enclosure. I'm just, I'm just so flabbergasted that like KT still thinks that these enclosures are appropriate. Actually, no, they know that they're not appropriate but they still make them because money. So that was a really bad setup. That just ugh, screams awful. And I don't think we inquired more as to the reason why they were rehoming other than more than likely they didn't want any more. And the person that was rehoming them looked like a mother and daughter or else young teenagers, but it's very hard to tell. I'm not gonna go browse their Facebook page. There could be any sort of unintentional and intentional neglect from any sort of person. It doesn't matter what they look like, but this right here just screams of a case of, I don't care about the animal, passing it off, captain stays with his ship, he 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 he. No, I don't like that. It's like, your humor, no. Especially since the animal came injured. <sighs> they just didn't care. So yeah, this, this was just, in my opinion, POS. You could smell it from the car, I could smell it, I could smell it in here. When we actually opened up the wheel where they were more than likely sleeping inside of it, he reeked. Anyways, gerbil time. So these gerbils need to rehome two friendly male gerbils. Actually, one of them is okay being handled. The other one is not okay. And it's not considered to be friendly. Friendly is like, yo, what's up neighbor? I'm being friendly, I'm approaching you. See, friendliness to me is approachable. They were definitely not, one of them at least, you know, 
did okay. The other one, definitely not. So I wanted to say friendly. A lot of people do this to try to give you the animal and to get it off of their backs. They are three months old and are all tan colors. So I don't know why they're three months old or how they know that. Usually when you hear that they're, you know, certain amount old, it's because they included all the information and it was very appreciative. Or they're saying that because maybe they got them from like a breeder or someone breeding them and they know exactly how old they are. Because when you purchase from a pet store, you don't get told how old they are because they can come in as old as like three, four months old, surprisingly enough, and some as young as five weeks old. Gerbils are low maintenance and don't take up much space. <laughs> this ad, don't ever say it's low maintenance. They are friendly as well as also fun to watch. You already told me they are friendly. Now you're telling me they're friendly. So this, we couldn't decipher whether or not these were people trying to get rid of her gerbils or these were people that bred intentionally and are now selling them. But the picture is a 10, what we suspect, just from the size of it, from what we can tell, 10 gallon tank. And they had one of those snack shack chew toys, which has honey and wood shavings as a chew. And it's just in a very horrible setup. It doesn't look right at all. But guess what? What we got was not that. It was a KT Critter Trail. So what I was saying earlier was that was more than likely what they originally came in or maybe they originally bought for them, upgraded to a tank and then kept the tank because tanks are very valuable. It could be used for a plethora of different things so they could easily sell tanks. However, for the broken KT Critter Trail cage, they could easily get rid of it. And they did with it. I wasn't actually expecting them to come in something, but they did. So that's their ad. It looks terrible. And moving on. Oh, and before I forget, we actually rescued two other hamsters today. Yeah, they're just not here right now. So, and last but not least, we have the two different species of hamsters, the Roboroski and the Russian Dwarf. And this is what their ad said. Rehoming Dwarf Hamster. And it just said hamster, not hamsters. I have two male dwarf hamsters. Light brown is Theodore and the chunky one is Buckley. I have to rehome them due to working and not being able to give them all my attention. They will come with food about one fourth left. A ball, two add-ons to their cage, which we did not receive and one half bag of bedding, which was not one half. That was definitely a one fourth. There is a small rehoming fee. Feel free to offer another price. I'm willing to negotiate. Call or text me with the price. I believe in this situation, what we ended up doing was that we did not take the enclosure. We just offered for the hamsters. They said yes. And then they said, well, we'll throw in their stuff then. So I think they're actually trying to sell the cage separately or they're going to toss the cage. But when we first see the picture, it is of the robo. But then if we go to the second one, it is of the robo and the Russian dwarf hamster. And when talking to them, this is what they answered us when asking questions. I am unsure of their age. I bought them separately. The oldest, I believe, is Theodore. He's the tan looking one. He's from PetSmart. The other one is Buckley. I bought him at Petco just about two weeks after Theodore. I've had them for about two months. You bought two different hamsters. You know you did because they're two different species and you put them together and somehow they did not kill each other. How? Wow, but we did see that the robo hamster had at least one bite wound that was what looked like healing. But still, we asked that question because I wanted to see if the pet store actually sold them together. This was my worst nightmare at the pet store of which I worked at, where I was afraid that when I saw a customer regularly trying to get animals from us, that they were doing something suspicious. And we've actually had people completely be banned under the impression that they were possibly breeders or injuring or doing something terrible to their animals, which was awesome. We had control over that, especially when we asked questions and we found out a little bit more information about these individuals because they like to talk a lot. And we're like, no, we're not gonna sell you an animal. They could just go to a different pet store and avoid the whole thing again. And and that's what really sucks is that someone could have been told, no, you shouldn't have two dwarf hamsters together. You shouldn't have any hamsters together. And the thing is they went to PetSmart where on their card itself, it says four dwarf hamsters, which I applaud at least PetSmart for doing this. They cannot be cohab together, solitary. That is just f***ing ignorance right there. They stuck them in a tiny tail enclosure together. And I'm just, I'm just thinking, how can you not hear, especially from that bite wound to the face, how could you not hear squeaking like that? Did you think that, oh, they're getting along, that's cute. What is up with these people? I, mm, 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 mm. This person 
might have tricked the pet store employee. Or maybe the pet store employee's like, oh, you have another hamster? Yeah, you can add this hamster in with your other existing hamster. I mean, that's the thing too, it's just this person could have been given misinformation. But I'm assuming, not so likely, thinking that I can do what I want, they, are, they should be fine together, right? No. No, hun, no. And you only have them for a couple of months? What the fuck is wrong? I'm just going to test the waters, and if I don't like, you know, I can just rehome and make my money's worth back, right? Why can't people understand that these animals need to be researched well ahead in advance? Please do your research, guys, please. So thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you to those of you who like the video and to support the channel through our many, many years of just doing this small animal fostering, before that, cats, and before that, just random tidbits of me. So thank you for all the support from you guys out there and we'll continue to rescue those most in need and make sure to follow us on our rescues page, not personal page, rescues page for updates on these guys that we took in today. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.